Welcome to your Miracle Moment. We are here at the night of worship with Adrian Singh. It has been an amazing night and well, glory to God. So many have been healed and touched by God today as well. Now I'm here with Sister Patricia. Now will you share with us, is this your first time joining us at the Miracle Center? Yes, this was my, it was my first time. It's a good thing because today you received healing from uh, your for your kidneys. Now, will you share with us what was wrong with your kidneys? I was having a back pain, a severe back pain. So I go to the hospital. They said I must leave the, the, the test. That they will make the test after three weeks. So I was always hearing this pain. As much as I'm working, I was working for a long time. So I hear that this pain. It was severe. When we come here, I just rest. Then when we go in front, and the pastor said, someone is having someone a here, you've got problems problem, on your and I lift my hand. Is that you as well, sweetie? You're going to get healed now, just now. Bring, bring up here. Give me a mic. How I many of you know that God heals instantly? Amen. Let me explain this. God, Jesus never told anybody, go home, in 10 days you'll be better. God always heals instantly. That's the presence and the power of a living God. Are you with me? Was it for a few was years it or? Yeah. But so it's was a long time. Your kidneys before. Yes, I was. Sorry. Do you believe Jesus will heal you right now? Yes, I believe. your hands towards that God's got a healer. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on a brand new kidneys. Oh, there all the swelling goes. All the swelling goes. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. There's it. Oh, there's it. There's it. There's it. There's it. What happened? Huh? What happened? I just have a hiccup. I just have a hiccup. What you mean a hiccup? It like came up? Yeah. And what happened to your kidney? Press your kidneys. Press it hard. What happened to all the pain? What do you mean you don't feel the pain? Come here, come here, come here. How can this thing just disappear like that? Where are you from, by the way? I'm from Carltonville. You're from Carltonville. Okay, yes. lovely. So what happened right now to your kidney? Like, I don't understand when you press me, like something. Jumped up. Yeah. Okay, that was a demon spirit that jumped off. Because all sickness, Acts 10, 38, is an oppression of the devil. All we did was take out the devil. That's why your body got healed. So you remember what I said? When Jesus heals, he heals instantly. He heals instantly. I can feel that something, that the pain's I, gone. Yeah, I hear the pain's gone. Wow, Patricia. Even now it's too long. Uh, I used to go to the toilet, plus minus 45 minutes. It's been more than two hours. I didn't go to the toilet. Since the first time this thing happened to me. Well, this... I usually go to the toilet 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but it's more than two hours now. I didn't go to the toilet. I even told my brother, what's going on today? I don't do my business. He said, no, because you meet God today. Amen. Today, Jesus has healed you. Yes, I'm so grateful. Amen. Thank you. So just like Sister Patricia just spoke, um, besides faith, there's actually four requirements for you to receive your healing. So you can learn about how to receive your healing and how to keep your healing. So we're gonna encourage you to check them out on our bookstore. Stay tuned to your Miracle Moment. Subscribe and remember that miracles are normal. Talking about how to activate kings in the marketplace. Activate kings in the marketplace. You may ask the question, Pastor, what is the marketplace? The marketplace is where God plants you. It's where God plants you. So if God plants you, for example, in a school and you're studying, that's your marketplace. If God plants you in a certain company, maybe it's a printing company, that's your marketplace. God plants you in, uh, in a certain uh, uh, job or certain location, a certain area, that's your marketplace. It's where God plants you. Your marketplace is every place that God plants you outside your church. So your church is not your marketplace. In the Bible, some people tried to make the house of God a marketplace. And so when Jesus turned up, he took out the whoop for them. Because why? They wanted the house of God to be the marketplace. It's not the marketplace. The marketplace is everywhere outside the house of God. Is everybody with me so far? So we want to talk about what kings are and, and how God activates kings. But let's first start 
But we're going to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. So if you've got your Bible, take it out, Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read about the golden rule of existence. And God said, let us make man our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion upon the earth. We were created from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We were created to have fellowship with God. Everybody say fellowship with God. The reason you are born was not because your mom and dad didn't have TV. <laughs> the reason you were born, no person is a mistake. No person is ever a mistake. The reason you were born is because God cr created you. You were manufactured to have fellowship with God. That is your number one purpose on the earth, is to have fellowship with God. Amen? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful by whom you, that's you, were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 1 John 1, 3 says, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. So all of us are called into fellowship. All of us are called to have fellowship with God. Now, this is so critical because sometimes people want God to do things, yet they have no fellowship with him. How many of you, if a stranger comes, knocks on your door and says, I want this and I want this and I want that, are you going to say, oh, yeah, sure. You don't know the person. You have no relationship with them. You can't bless someone you don't know. You have no relationship with them. Once you lack fellowship with God, you lack everything heaven can bring to you. You see, I asked, I asked this question the other day, and some of you will, were there at the conference, and I'll ask it to you as well. What is eternal life? What is the gift of eternal life? Now, people have some very silly definitions of eternal life. Well, you know, they watch this program like the Highlander. <laughs> the guy goes on living forever and ever. So, well, eternal life means you live forever and ever in heaven. No, that's not eternal life. Eternal life doesn't mean you can live forever and ever because every person lives forever and ever. The only difference, there's only one difference, is whether you live upstairs in heaven or downstairs in hell. Whether you live in continuous grace and blessing and joy, or you live in continuous torment, but you live forever and ever in either one of those two places. The only way to get upstairs is through Jesus Christ. He's the only door. There's no other way to get to heaven. It's only through Jesus. But you can decide, I want to live downstairs. God didn't create hell for, for humans. He created hell for the demons to be tormented forever. But people chose to go to hell. The moment they rejected Jesus, they made a decision to go to hell. So people willingly go into hell. Yet, God wants you to be in heaven. But whether you're in heaven or in hell, you live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So eternal life is not living forever. This is what eternal life is. Let me give you the definition of eternal life. I know a lot of people teach us wrong stuff. This is what the Bible teaches. Watch. John 17, verses 2 and 3. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, Jesus speaking. For, for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to those you have given to him. So what is this gift of eternal life? Now this is eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life's got nothing with living forever and ever. Eternal life is having a relationship with God. The, you now walk boldly into the presence of God, the veil is torn, and you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter relationship with God. When you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, then you operate in eternal life. Everybody has the gift of eternal life. Everybody can have a personal relationship with God. But even though you can have a personal relationship, you have to choose. You have to choose to have a relationship with God. You've got to choose to know God. And the only way you'll ever know anyone is when you fellowship with them. The more time you spend fellowshipping with God, the more you begin to see who God is, how He thinks, how He acts, and what His plans are. You'll only know that stuff if you operate in eternal life. 
Eternal life is not when you die. And it's a now thing. The day you're born again, you have eternal life. It's knowing God. Amen? And the more time you spend in fellowship with God, the more time you, 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 you know, there's a scripture that says that anybody wants anything from God, they must first know that he is. And number two, that he is a reward of them that seek him. Anything you want from God, you're first going to know who he is. You have to know who he is. You have to understand his personality. You have to understand uh, 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 what his thoughts are. What he wants in your situation. How he wants to change your life. How he wants to always bless you, give you hope in the future. You know, when God looks at you, he doesn't think about any wrong that you've done. He sees you as absolutely perfect. The devil accuses you, not God. God's not waiting with a stick to punish you. He's only thinking about Jeremiah 29, 11, how he can prosper you, give you a hope and expect an end, how he can change your life around, how he can bless you. That's the only thought that God has when he thinks about you. He wants to give you an expected end. So God is good all the time, and he wants to bless your life. But the only way to know the goodness of God, to live the goodness of God, to experience the goodness of God, is to have a personal relationship with him. You see, religion does this. Religion puts a process before God. Religion puts a man before God. But God says, uh-uh, I want you to come straight through to me. Don't go through any other door. I am the only door. And I want you to know me. And I want to know you. And so, once you spend time with God, the Bible says that first you must believe that who he is, and secondly, that he's a rewarder. So guess what happens? As you spend time with God, you'll always come to this place where you will ask this question. God, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? You are watching Your Miracle Moment, and today I am joined by Sister Leonie, and she has experienced a supernatural touch from God in today's service. Sister Leonie, welcome. Thank you. How do you feel? Relieved. <laughs> Amen. Tell our viewers, what was your condition before you came into today's service? I had a spinal condition for um, over 10 years, about 12 years and the pain would come and go over the years and um, I would trust God for my healing. And when Pastor Siva prayed for me, he prayed over my legs as well. And I could feel an immediate relief in my lower back. And as I said, I'm just so grateful that I am now totally healed from that. Amen. And what couldn't you do in the past 12 years because of the spinal disorder? It didn't really uh, limit my function. It was just mostly um, if I lie, ba lie down in bed and sleep and it would be difficult to, to get out of bed or if I sit down, I would just have constant pain. Okay, so it was pain that affected your quality of life to a certain extent? Yes. And today you are completely relieved and set free? I am so grateful, <laughs> finally. And I thank God for Pastor Seba that could speak word of life over me. Amen. That is simply amazing to be free from pain after 12 years after suffering with a spinal disorder. This is simply amazing and this is the God that we serve who is so merciful. The Bible speaks about healing and healing is God's gift to us. And you can learn all about the healing biblical principles in our healing manual. The details are on the screen. You can order it from our bookshop and you can learn how to be healed and how to maintain your healing. Come join us at the Miracle Center. We'd love to have you. And remember with Jesus, all things are possible and miracles are normal. Amen. Amen. So guess what happens? As you spend time with God, you'll always come to this place where you will ask this question. God, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Why am I on the earth? Why was I born into this family? Why was I born into this country? Why was I uh, 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 born at this time? What is the reason why I am here? So, you want to know, as you spend more time in fellowship, you want to know your purpose. You want to know, why did God make me? So, 
Let's go to the next verse, verse 28. We looked at verse 26. Verse 28, the Bible says, God now gives you your assignment. That means when you spend time with God, he tells you why you were born. He tells you your purpose. He tells you what your destiny is. Now, the destiny that God has for you is not the destiny that Babylon has for you. Let me say this again. How many of you went to a government school? Put your hand up, you went to a government school. Because you went to a government school, I also went to a government school. You're automatically messed up. <laughs> I'm serious. You messed up. Because a government school is a Babylonian thinking school. They teach you in a government school, this is what you learned, right? Tell me if I'm wrong. You learned, they said to you, study hard, get good marks, go to a post, uh, 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 a tertiary institution, uh, get a diploma or a degree, then get yourself a good job, buy yourself a house, have a family, grow old, and die. That is Babylonian thinking. It's what you learned when you went to a government school, because a government school taught you to be a good employee. Let me say it again. A government school taught you to be an employee. That's a Babylonian thinking. Because you know, you know something that'll shock you? There is no calling in the Bible to be an employee. There's no way in the Bible. God doesn't call anyone to be an employee. He says you'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be above, never beneath. So when you go to a government school, they mess you up, and you think you must get yourself a good job. You always want a promotion, the next promotion, next promotion. And it's not what God teaches. You know, my kids went to, to private school. When they were in grade six, they were already learning how to run their own business. In the school, taught them that. So the way they think is not the way I learned to think, <laughs> or used to think. Because I, went, I followed a Babylonian system, and I, I, I followed an employee system, which is not a God system. Because the Bible says the employees are the unbelievers. The heathen works your field. Oh, you don't get this. If you're a Christian, you're actually not born to... You start off as an employee, but you're not destined to be an employee. If you're outside the covenant, yeah, you'll still be an employee. But if you're inside the covenant, you're not designed to be an employee. Oh, it's quiet here now. So God says to every person, this is your purpose. This is the reason you were born. This is your calling. And your calling is defined in a word called the blessing. Now... The word is not blessings, it's blessing. Because you see, you can have many blessings, but only one blessing. Oh, you try somebody this side. See, when, um, when Jacob went to his father, lied to his father, and stole the blessing, his brother came, brother Esau came back later and he said, hey, don't you have something for me? And his father said, I can't give you that blessing. I've already given it to Jacob. But I can give you a substitute, which is not as high as the blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. You've got to get this. You've got to understand this. There's only one blessing. But in that one blessing, you'll experience blessings in life. So what is the blessing? The blessing is a definition of what your purpose is, your ministry, your calling, whatever you want to call it. The blessing is what God has called you to function in. Everybody with me so far? So what, is, what, is, what does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean to have an assignment? There's a chair in Genesis 1. God said to them, be fruitful. Everybody say fruitful. The word fruitful means you'll never lack. The word fruitful is a accounting word. Another word for fruitful is the word to make a profit. 
So if you know you're in a business, you can either make a profit or a loss, right? So the word fruitful means I have given you the ability to always make a profit. That's what it means to be blessed. You have the ability to never run a loss. Oh. Number two, number two is that you will continuously multiply. You'll continue, continuously prosper, increase. So number one, you have the ability inside you now. This is your calling. Whatever you're called to do, even if you're called to be a pastor, even if you're called to be an evangelist, even if you're called to be a missionary, even if you're called to be a businesswoman or a businessman, even if you're called to be a politician, even if you're called to be in the arts, a singer or a musician, whatever you're called to do, you're number one, because God has put this call in your life, it has five parts. Number one, you will always prosper. Always make a profit. Always. Don't listen to people that talk about highs and lows. That's in the Babylonian system. In Babylon, they talk about high season, but you know, hey, the economy is running like this, that. No, no, no. The economy has nothing to do with you when you're in the kingdom. There was a man that went to a country deep in recession, but because he's in the kingdom and not in Babylon, he decided to do farming. Everybody said, hey, there's a recession, there's drought here, you'll have no crop. That man had multiple crops in just one year. He became so wealthy in the middle of recession that he bought up three quarters of that city. Even the king was afraid of him because he was so powerful. His name was Isaac. You see, if you think Babylon, you will have Babylon. You live in Babylon. You can never supersede what you accept. You have to change and think the way God thinks. Then you can have what God has for you. So number one, your purpose, the reason why you're alive right now is because you were blessed, you were given the ability to make a profit always. Number two, whatever you start will grow in size, it'll multiply. So, so if God gives you a business where you sell cupcakes, you may have a corner shop now. If I come back to you six months, you should have a much bigger store. I come back to you a year's time, you should be in the middle of a mall. A year and a half time, you should have a franchise all over the place. Because why? That ability was given to you as your destiny. Number three, replenish. Replenish means whatever is missing, you're going to put it back there. If God's principles are missing, you put God's principles in there. If, it, if the business doesn't run, runs on Babylonian thinking, you're going to stop Babylonian thinking and put kingdom thinking into the business. Number four, because you're blessed, you're called to subdue. Who do you subdue? All your competition. So if God says, hey, you are to own a, a chicken licken or a, <laughs> a chicken fast food place, that means you have to close down all the other businesses that compete with you. Oh, you didn't hear that. Yeah, Pastor, I'm just a nice guy. I, I you know, I, I'm just minding my own business. I'm just in my one corner and I'm not interfering with anybody then you're not operating in the blessing. Because the blessing commands you to close down your competition. And it gives you the ability to close them down. The only time you cannot close down your competition is when they are also in the kingdom. So if it's a, another someone else... You are watching Your Miracle Moment. And today I am joined by Sister Gail and she's going to share how God has miraculously healed her. Sister Gail, how do you feel? I'm so well that I, I, I can't explain what happened to me. It's like a miracle. 
all the pain is gone. I had a pain in my leg for, for the past six to eight months. I used to keep it up, hold it down, don't know what to do, rub it, do everything, take all the pain pills, nothing helped. Today I came to the medical center and Pastor Jesse prayed for me and the pain is gone. Wow, that's simply amazing. So you said for about six to seven months, you've had continuous pain. From my ankle, from my ankle to my knee. And I didn't know if it's the bone or is the muscle or what is wrong. And you've taken medication and rubbed medicine and nothing would help you. Nothing will help. And today, all that pain is gone. All that pain is gone. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. And that is the power of God. That is the power of God. And you are completely healed? Completely. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. After a period of seven months being in continuous pain and just one touch from God, and you are completely set free. Amen. Amen. That is amazing. And that is the God that we serve, the God of the impossible. We'd love to have you visit us at the Miracle Center. And like Sister Gail, you also can receive your miracle. You don't need to live in pain. You don't need to be in constant agony because Jesus died on the cross for you. And what he has done for Sister Gail, he can do it for you. We'd love to have you join us. And remember, miracles is normal. Amen.